Hello everyone. I'm really excited. I'm here in Karlskrona, Sweden to visit with Jean-Pierre Candioti. He is working with refugees here in uh, Karlskrona. So stick around. You don't want to miss this episode. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Hi, JP. Welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. Nice to have you here. Well, it's uh, really a pleasure, and I appreciate you taking the time for us so that we can visit. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work. Cool. Well, um, I'm the sister entrepreneur of Resilience Cooperative Lab, which is a cooperative that runs an initiative called the Refugees Transition Lab. And. Who are the refugees that you're working with that are here in the Karlskrona area of Sweden? Well, uh, the refugees I work with are all the, the refugees that can come, uh, they are welcome, and most of them are from Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, Syria, Kuwait. So they have been fleeing the conflicts in that area with ISIS and, every, and the Syria uh, insurrection or mm -hmm. civil war, mm -hmm. all of that, right? Yes, yes, definitely so, yeah. yeah. They come from uh, the Arabic countries, usually through uh, Turkey, arrive to uh, Greece by boat or Italy, mm -hmm. and then, then they made their way up to the Nordics. Uh, as they come up, have they usually been assisted in a formal sense to arrive here as refugees destined for Sweden, or did they just walk uh, without permission no, until no, they got yeah, here? Yeah, they, they, they go uh, without permission, uh, permission of who, I guess, uh, permission of uh, the borders, the controls, the politicians, yeah. the police. So, uh, um, yeah, what they do is they come to, to find their dream life, to find uh, a better life, to find uh, peace. Now, many of them came in, was it 2015? Uh, well, uh, I worked with refugees that came 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. But, um there was a big surge. Was it in 2015 when 200,000 refugees came to yes, Sweden? Yes, yes, you are right, exactly. Uh, so from 2012 to 14, it was about 20, 30,000, but in 2015 came, yeah, like 10 times more. Wow. And then it relates uh, with uh, higher controls uh, in the borders. So in that year, Sweden took in more refugees per capita than any other country in the world, you told me. Is that right? Uh, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, right now, we, the last five years, is about uh, 500,000 uh, refugees. Um, Sweden is a country with a population of 10 million. So it's like 5% of the population is refugee immigrants. Yes, wow. that's why we our work is important. Yeah. Yes. So tell us more about what you do. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you engage with the refugee community here? Well, uh, as a system entrepreneur, what I do is I work with different systems. Uh, I work with politics, politicians. I work with uh, business. Uh, I work with the refugees themselves. So I'm the person in between. I'm the translator. I'm the one that got the trust of mm -hmm. the refugees for the simple and just natural scene of, of treating them as I treat you mm -hmm. with respect uh, and understanding. Um, yeah, so what I do is I'm uh, working on creating better conditions for them because I think that they should grow as persons, as, as a world citizens. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for that, uh, I work with the uh, three corners of a well-fair uh, nation, no? which is education and employment, and watching into the first part of, uh, of their transition. That's why it's called the refugees transition. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, probably, how it is to feel uh, your neighborhood, 
been bombarded. Mm-hmm. You have lost everything, and then yes, you have to move. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a, you go in a transition, right? And you go in, in what I empirically have put as a three phases, or three main transitions. The f- phase one, which is uh, the post-traumatic phase. Mm-hmm. And the second phase, which is education. Uh, that answer to the question, what do we do? Well, so I'm a project manager of a program supported by the ministers of uh, the Nordic countries that empowers them uh, with competences that are going to serve them during their life, make them more resilient, make them uh, inspire their creativity. Mm-hmm. And the phase three in these transitions is identifying entrepreneurs so that they can have a more funny and meaningful life. Yeah. Yeah. What are the successes you're most proud of having created in this program? Well, first of all, uh, this is an evolution because uh, we started a program called Refugee Entrepreneurship Sweden for more than a year ago where uh, I have empowered uh, more than 100 refugees. And what I'm proud is that I think that I have empowered them uh, with, that they feel that there is people that cares naturally mm-hmm. and that they know that there is people that is open heart mm-hmm. and open mind to treat them as they should be treated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as we were walking over here, we saw a uh, across the town plaza. We saw a food truck that was that sold Middle Eastern food. Oh yes. And it was mm-hmm. uh, from uh, a refugee family that had come <laughs> maybe ten years ago. Yes. Um, are you continuing to see entrepreneurial successes like that among the refugee community? Uh, th- Interesting enough, there is a mar- there is a black market among them, so they sell each other things, uh, telephone or books or so they do mm-hmm. things. Uh, but we need to to work at the different layers and we need to simplify their process. Uh, refugees doesn't need to be moved every 12, 12, 15 months from one city to another city, or outside there or here because what they cost to the nation is enough money to invest in them in a better way and yeah. think of them as a world citizens, whether they get a residence to stay in Sweden or if they go back to their countries, they can create a better world or yeah. their own better life. Yeah. Are um, some of the challenges that they face is a lack of access to capital uh, for startup businesses. Uh, mm-hmm. Have you been able to address that for them? Well, that's uh, that's where we are uh, going for uh, to help creating stories that are real. Mm-hmm. And, and narrating that uh, we should invest in them because otherwise they will be only a cost. So um, an investment not only of money, but investment of uh, time, mm-hmm. giving them opportunities, giving them tasks. If you want to, if you need to buy something, buy from a refugee, buy from an immigrant instead of buying from the monopoly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As you think about uh, your own personal experience, mm-hmm. uh, you immigrated here from Peru. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that inform your work uh, working with immigrants and refugees? Well, I think so uh, because Peru is a, is a country where it's divided by uh, Incomes, family incomes. So I think that this uh, can help me to see 
the differences between uh, rich and poor and understanding mm -hmm. that uh, for half this kind of societies uh, as, as we live now uh, we need to to move all together into into a good future because if you leave someone behind mm -hmm. they will be a problem and those problems are going to grow just like cancer uh, so if you got one family that is not thriving then their friends of, of their kids are going to be in this world and just leave from the state and yeah maybe go into negative things that doesn't make them happy yeah um, You've been studying this. You've got mm -hmm. two master's degrees that you earned here in Sweden. You uh, have been at this for a while. What's the most important thing you've learned about these issues? What I, I think that the most important thing is to, to become optimistic and to see that uh, Future generations are, are much are, are much more uh, conscious uh, about what means to to have uh, to see each other as as, as, as equals. Mm -hmm. Yes, and to understand. So uh, I think that this systemic uh, understanding of 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 that of of, of things and of the challenges is most important. As you um, explained to me earlier, you um, previously worked for a big mining company. Oh. Um, I'm curious about how you decided to make this transition. This is a pretty, pretty big transition yeah, yeah. to working for a mining company to uh, working on refugee issues in Sweden. What, what motivated that transition? Well, when I moved to Sweden, uh, I pursued a master in uh, business uh, and my focus was innovation systems. So things were perfect there, still uh, on the old infinite understanding of the planet and the resources. Uh, it was great to could understand how uh, systems, societies work. And, but then I, I got an invitation to make a studies in sustainability and sustainable development. So from there, I got this uh, scientific understanding of, uh, of how to manage projects that aims to create a better world. So, and then I felt like, yeah, that makes sense for me. Like, if I still I have time to do something, it's where I do things that can help others. Uh, so, and if I would go back to Peru, probably I would work with a different issue, a big, big, big problem. Maybe I would mm -hmm. work with waste management mm -hmm. in yeah. Peru, for example. Sure. Yeah. But in Sweden, uh, we, you know, we import garbage because so good here. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that the, big, the, the biggest problem in, in Sweden, in, uh, not in the environment, but, but, but social problems, one is depression and uh, self uh, sui or suicide. Yeah. yeah. And the second one is uh, refugee crisis and integration of immigrants. Yeah. So I went for the big yeah. there you go. social problem. Yes. JP, what's your superpower? Wow, my superpower. I, I, I think that my superpower until now is to be resilient. So I, I, I hope I will keep it with me. And as well that I'm a, I'm a genuine, empathetic person, so. Excellent, excellent. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to mm -hmm. show us a little bit about Carl's Krona and to take the time mm -hmm. to tell us about your work here. Before we wrap up, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about your work with the refugees here? Yes, of course. Um, we are uh, using social media. Uh, 
we have a couple of uh, projects I would like to comment before finishing this episode. Please. Which is uh, some uh, hashtags of uh, we are speaking about. So it's mm -hmm. not only me, but some other other persons in the Nordics uh, creating this this narrative of uh, working with slash uh, hashtag deep local challenges. Mm. Um, hashtag shared prosperity and um, yeah we are in social media and you can find you, you you will see more more information that I'm happy you share with your network and great yes oh, fantastic well thank again you. thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today and we wish Thanks. you every success in helping to integrate uh, the refugee community here in Sweden yes refugee Nordics Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, then. All righty. Okay. Let's do some good. Devon Thorpe's mission is to end extreme poverty, improve global health, and mitigate climate change before 2045 by finding and sharing the stories of those who are doing the most good. Thanks for tuning in to the Your Mark on the World show, the Social Impact Podcast. Please subscribe via YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. Spotify.